What is up YouTube gang? It's your boy Friday Random Media and I'm back once again on this Friday with another video and today we're going to be diving back into one of my favorite series here on the channel, the What If series. If you want to see the rest of the What If episodes, go check out the What If playlist on my channel, shouldn't be too hard to find. And if you want to see more of this style video, comment down below what you want to see. I do Marvel, DC, Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, horror, gaming, all of it. So comment down below, hit that like button, and also hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Thank you guys, and I hope you enjoy the video. So today, we're going to go with a Marvel What If, and more specifically, Marvel Live Action, The Avengers of the 2000s. So before I go into the plot or the antagonist, I want to go into what heroes I would like to see in this film if it ever came to life. Number one, we have an absolute classic an OG in the superhero comic book movie gang, we got Blade, Wesley Snipes Blade. Now when it comes to Blade, not only is he just a badass character, you know, he's got the shades, he's got the leather trench coat, he's got the sword, he's part vampire. Blade is also a staple in making comic book movies badass, a staple in making comic book movies something you can, you know, take seriously. Of course there was funny moments in the movies, but it's something that made people go, oh wow, like superhero movies, comic book movies, they can be good. In fact, they can be great. So moving on to number two, I would like to see Fantastic Four in the Avengers 2000s for a few different reasons. And you've got Reed Richards, Mr. Fantastic. Of course, he's got his superpowers, but also his genius level intellect. I feel like that would play such a huge part in if this film was to ever be made. You've also got Sue Storm, the Invisible Woman, She's got her very powerful force fields and her invisibility powers, but also she's like the glue that holds this group together. You've also got Ben Grimm, the thing, physically strong, physically durable. Uh, he also adds a lot of emotional depth into the story and with the characters of the Fantastic Four. And finally, you've got Johnny Storm, the human torch. And of course, with his powers, his fire, his flight, he, he has tons of potential to be such a key player in this film. And also, he's kind of the comedic relief in the group, so you need some of that. Moving on to number three, of course, we could not leave him out. Spider-Man, specifically Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. And the thing about Tobey's Spider-Man is his heart. Spider-Man is the heart of the group. He would be pushing the team to do what's right, to make the sacrifices to save the world, no matter how difficult or maddening it may be. And the other thing about Tobey Spider-Man is that he's also a genius. He knows about nanotech. He knows about biology. So it'd be interesting to see him interact with all these different characters as well. Now branching off into number four, it may not be one that a lot of people are thinking about, but Daredevil. Ben Affleck's Daredevil. He's the perfect blend of a dark, rugged anti-hero, you know, cleaning up the streets at night, but also He's, he has a level of heroism that is admirable. I feel like he would blend very well in with Blade, along with Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. Now, moving on to number five, we've got another team. It's a classic, the X-Men. Specifically, Wolverine, played by Hugh Jackman. You got Storm, Iceman, Colossus, and I would put in Kitty Pryde. I don't want to have all the heavy hitters. I don't want to have all the stars. A lot of people may be tripping because, oh, Jean Grey or Cyclops or even Charles Xavier, but that's the thing about this movie. It's not going to be all the heavy hitters. So yeah, I think Wolverine, Storm, those two would be the leaders. You got Colossus as the muscle, Kitty Pride. You've got Iceman. He would be kind of some com comedic relief as well. So it's a very balanced team. Uh, not too OP, not too weak. I think it's a perfect blend. And I feel like these characters would have a very good dynamic, good interaction with the other characters. All right, now number six. We are getting up there in the numbers. How many heroes can you have? Well, we still haven't touched the biggest and the baddest. Of course, we've got the Hulk played by Eric Bana or Eric Bana. Um, stronger than the Thing in Colossus more durable than all of them an absolute maniac but aside from just the hulk hulking out doing hulk things we've also got bruce banner's genius 
this would be another thing. You know, you've got the biology side of things with Bruce Banner, Tobey Maguire linking more into, um, I don't know if it would be the technological side, but things with Reed Richards, of course. And also, Daredevil isn't too much of a slouch himself when it comes to the intellect side of things. Now, moving on to the final hero that I would place in this movie. The final hero for the Avengers 2000s, Ghost Rider, played by Nicolas Cage. That's right, and it's very interesting with Ghost Rider because he packs a punch, he packs a power that no one can hold a candle to, really. Of course, you've got Blade with his supernatural abilities. It's probably the closest thing to Ghost Rider. You've got the team efforts of X-Men and the Fantastic Four and their intellects combined. You've also got Hulk who's physically strong, but Ghost Rider carries something that none of them have, and that is powers straight from hell. Of course, like I said, Blade's supernatural ability as a vampire, but it does not touch anything that Ghost Rider is doing as far as hacks and superpowers. So now that we've got the lineup out of the way, now that we've got the heroes out of the way for the Avengers 2000s, who are they going to be facing? Who am I matching them up against? Of course, I'm going with the world eater Galactus. And I'm not talking about, you know, Fox's 2000 whatever Galactus, the big cosmic storm. Nope. I'm talking about the classic giant dude wearing a big purple mech suit with the big horned helmet with some freaky shades on, the Galactus we all know and love from the comics. Now, you may be asking, why put Galactus against this team? You've got Blade, you've got Spider-Man, Daredevil. Of course, you've got Hulk, Ghost Rider, uh, Fantastic Four, and X-Men, but this is Galactus. This is a planetary threat, potentially a solar system, potentially a universal threat. So, of course, the Avengers are going to need every bit of help they can get. And this is where the main plot would come in. So the way this begins is with Reed Richards doing his science thing, doing his genius thing, when he picks up a signature of a cosmic entity or a cosmic threat. Now, Reed Richards doesn't know what this is. He doesn't know what the signature is. He doesn't know what this threat could be, but he knows it's dangerous enough where he needs to comprise a group of a bunch of different superpowered individuals to potentially protect the Earth from this thing. This causes Reed Richards to reach out to another known scientist, another known genius, the one and only Bruce Banner. So now, while you have Reed Richards, the Fantastic Four, and Bruce Banner's Hulk, all together over here. Over on the other side of New York City, you've got Spider-Man and Daredevil teaming up to try to take on the likes of Kingpin. So now that we've got the Fantastic Four and Hulk over here doing their thing, we've got Spider-Man and Daredevil over here doing their thing. Finally, we've got the X-Men. And the way the X-Men get drafted here is they hear Reed Richards call for any potential heroes, any potential saviors, any potential help in figuring out and potentially defending the planet against this <laughs> terrible cosmic threat. Eventually, all three of the groups come together, they start discussing, and they come to the conclusion that they aren't exactly equipped to handle a situation like this, a threat like this. So what do they do? They resort to the supernatural world, of course, Blade. So now you've got all these characters mixed together, you've got them all in the same interaction, and this is where I think the film would shine the most. You've got Bruce Banner trying to hold back the Hulk, meanwhile you've got Blade and Wolverine being hotheads. You've got Spider-Man trying to be the heart of the group and hold everyone together, meanwhile Reed Richards is doing his big brain nerd shit going on. So now with these characters in the world confronted by Galactus, the team realizes that even with all their strength combined, even with all their intellect combined, it still isn't enough. Of course, you're going to have Reed Richards and Dr. Banner more trying to figure out a scientific, technological, even biological way to counteract the cosmic attacks by Galactus. Then you have Spider-Man, Daredevil, even some of the X-Men just questioning what could we possibly do? There's got to be someone we can recruit. And this is where Blade finally steps in with his supernatural knowledge. Of course, the Ghost Rider. This is where Ghost Rider really comes into play. In the midst of the attack, when the heroes think they're down and out, 
Earth is being devoured by Galactus. All the people and the life are being eaten by Galactus. The Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance awakens. And this is where I take a page from the old school cartoon. If you if you know what I'm talking about, Ghost Rider pulls up, nearly one shots Galactus with a pen and stare, makes him feel all the pain and the suffering and the guilt of all the lives he's ever taken across the universe. Now, this wouldn't consist of just Ghost Rider pulling up and one shotting Galactus, no difficulty. No. We would need a very drawn out, dramatic battle, and I'm talking Invisible Woman, using all her might to contain Galactus in a force field. Meanwhile, The Thing, The Hulk, and Colossus are teaming up, putting a beating on him as well as they can. Also, you've got Storm, an Omega level mutant who can affect weather on a planetary scale. Maybe she somehow summons some sort of cosmic storm that interrupts and interferes with Galactus' attacks. Now when it comes to the street tier heroes like Spider-Man, Daredevil, even Wolverine, you know, Kitty Pride would be great for this. Maybe they have some sort of technological weapon or trap that Mr. Fantastic's come up with that can trap or contain cosmic energy and they use their agility and their speed and, you know, their uh, nimbleness to go ahead and do all that while Galactus is wrapped up with the Hulk and Storm and the Thing and Colossus. Now, of course, in my opinion, Avengers 2000's what if scenario, the most important thing that matters to me is that every character has their key moment. Every character has their highlight. Every character gets their licks in, whether it's Blade, Wolverine, Iceman. So however it may go down, I do feel like it ends with, you know, a big punch from the Hulk, a pen and stare from Galactus, some sort of technological support from Mr. Fantastic. Finally, in the end, Galactus falls, the Earth is saved, and although the Avengers are looking around seeing all this destruction, seeing what needs to be rebuilt, this gives them the perfect reason to create the team, the Avengers. And this leaves room for another terrible threat down the line who maybe is more local, who doesn't come from another planet, who doesn't come from the cosmos, Doctor Doom. So, of course, if you want to see a part two to this video, go ahead and comment down below. If not, let me know what you guys want to see. I always love doing these what-if videos, so it's always right up my alley. Now, before I wrap this up, I do want to plug in my own original creation. That's right, as some of y'all know, I got my own comic book, my own comic anthology coming at the end of this year, December 2023. It's going to be featuring three different stories with three different main characters. We've got my flagship character, Godman the Lifebringer, if you want to see the video on him, got that link in the description. And another original character, Zorg of the Komodo Village of Planet Green. There's another video link in the comments about them if you want to learn about them and their story. So, like I said before, if you guys want to keep up with my comic, my characters, or even just see more content from me, whether it's versus battles or what if scenarios or whatever it may be, comment down below, hit that like button, make sure to hit that subscribe button, follow me on TikTok by the same name, Friday Random Media, and as always, thank you guys for stopping by, tuning in, have a great day, peace out.